course, is energy and climate change. The origin of this was when a number of us realized that the, the students that we're teaching are, are really the opinion makers, lawmakers, journalists of the future, and they get from the media this whole blizzard of conflicting claims. The primary goal is to enable students to be able to make intelligent opinions and to critically analyze the issues that they're going to have to face as voters, as lawmakers, journalists, whatever, as, as the future of society. We have experts in all of these different fields. And the idea is to give students not only the perspective of these sciences on energy and climate change, but also to learn how scientists in these fields think. So we tend to start with basic sciences, physics and chemistry, try to give the background that they'll need to, to understand climate. We divide it into module. There's a physics module in which Ron Ransom talks about nuclear energy. I talk about what does it mean that hydrocarbons have energy. At that point, they're ready for biological and climatological implications. Then we bring in modules, Joe Seneca, an economist. Now we have Rachel Schwamm, who's a policy expert. And the idea is to integrate all these things so that, as I said, ultimately students will be able to make informed policy decisions. The signature course begins with physics lectures. The main reason for this is the understanding of the physical principles uh, behind energy and climate change are essential to understanding what's going on. All the other modules rely on understanding the uh, basic physical principles related to climate change. The basic things that we want them to understand in the physics module is first what energy is. That's a, actually a, a rather abstract concept. We also want them to understand the, the physical principles of heat and energy transfer in the atmosphere. The other aspects are the physical principles that are used in generation of electricity, how nuclear power works, what it can do and what it can't do, why there are limits to efficiencies of engines, that is how much energy you need to get a certain amount of motion or a certain amount of electricity. By understanding these principles, they can understand why there are limits on energy usage. I am really excited to be teaching my first time in the signature course, Energy and Climate Change, and I'm hoping to bring some insight about what social science research can tell us about the challenge of climate change and some of kind of the economic incentives in place and policy. But I'm going to be talking about how we as humans are perceiving climate change and understanding climate change, some of the challenges around changing behavior even when the correct economic incentives are in place for us to behave one way and save energy, why we may still not act to do that. I'll be talking a lot about how climate change science has been treated in the political process and the mobilization around emphasizing uncertainty and why climate change science is talked about differently than other kinds of science. And so I'll be trying to help students understand those social dimensions. In this course, which is a signature course, we're trying to give students the ability to assess scientific issues. And I think science is really what distinguishes the modern world from everybody who came before us. And these issues are only going to play a larger and larger role in, in government, in, in policy. And so it's really critical that non-scientists have this understanding, that we cross this barrier between the, the scientists and the non-scientists. We as scientists can't just talk among ourselves. So. A signature course is really designed to have the broadest possible impact so that students will be able to deal with energy issues which are not going away in their lifetime as well as scientific issues in general. Mm -hmm.